So, uh, I'm Mike Dunn, I'm a lead tabletop editor of Gaming Trend, and I'm here with Justin Jacobson Hello. of Restoration Games, and we wanted to ask him a few questions here at Gen Con. Um, so Justin, uh, you guys have been just killing it with the res restorations lately. You've got Dark Tower coming out soon, uh, you've got the uh, Unmatched series, which is really starting to pick up some steam. Uh, you've got Downforce, Fireball Island. What uh, what can you tell us about the direction Restoration Games is going in the next, say, year or two? Sure. Uh, so we do have a couple of big items still left. So when we started the company, we uh, and ever since then, you can go there right now on our website. Is people can ask us what games they want us to bring back. And we've got this running list. So the big three were Hero Quest, Dark Tower, and Fireball Island. Obviously, Hasbro's doing Hero Quest. Good right. for them. And yeah. uh, we've got our other two. But the next big three were Thunder Road, Omega Virus, and Crossbows and Catapults. So those are the big three we're working on over the next few years. Nice. And then we also we do like to do obviously Unmatched is blown up for us. So we'd like to we got a bunch of sets planned. We've got sets planned out for the next three years for that. Uh, some licensed stuff, some unlicensed stuff. Uh, it's really fun to work on those. I always say. The most fun I have is designing new unmatched decks. That's the most yeah. fun I have around in my job. And then we're also looking to do some uh, other games, like uh, some stuff that people may not know about that we can bring some light to, or uh, smaller games. Uh, one of the things, given the way logistics has been, we're actually looking to do a few games domestically, produced domestically. So we're looking at games that don't require as many exotic components, which are harder to do for some of the uh, domestic uh, manufacturers. Uh, so we announced recently there's a game called Buried Treasure. B E R R I E D. So Suzanne let us do that pun. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, based on an old Sid Saxon game called B U R I E D, Buried Treasure. With a pirate theme, we've redone it a little bit. Now it's uh, furry critters stealing cakes from a bakery and stuff. But it's a real quick, uh, fast sort of take that, uh, high interaction, uh, hard set building game. And it's a lot of fun. And we're pr uh, producing that one domestically. And then uh, we're looking to look into another type of smaller game that we can look to do domestically as well and slot those types of games in in between the big kickstarters and whatnot nice so what are you pushing really hard here at the at the con well the big year? thing is thunder road uh, obviously people are excited to see return to dark tower but that's in this weird state where the game is being manufactured and now we're just trying to enjoy the fun of international logistics and getting it over to the backers and uh to the uh, distributors uh so in the meantime <laughs> in the meantime, uh, we're pushing Thunder Road Vendetta, is a new version of the 1986 game. Sort of a Mad Max vibe, uh, but uh, this the original was more like Road Warrior. This one's a little bit more for original Mad Max or Grindhouse feel. It's a run, gun, race, uh, crash game. Really chaotic. It's a lot of fun. The original was super chaotic, which we that's what we focused on. And then, as usual, we sort of take that original game uh, and then build a good game around that to support that. And so we just made a few refinements, uh, reduce the downtime, make the turns a little snappier, add some more variety, like including uh, different types of terrain and damage tokens and hazards. And we just started showing this this off. I'm gonna be putting some more stuff on social media. Our Kickstarter's looking to launch on October 12th. That's a tentative date. Nice. And uh, we got some expansions planned that are fun. You can play as a, you can get an expansion with a semi truck and a gang of five motorcycles. Plays completely different, nice. uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's nice. really the, what we're leaning into right now. Um, so I know uh, you're doing, you're you're kind of dipping your toe a little deeper with the sort of app-assisted game stuff, uh, like with Dark Tower yeah. uh, specifically is the one I know about. Are are is that something you're going to keep on doing? Is that something you think you're you're iterating and, and getting to more interesting places with with some of the the games that you've got coming uh, down the pipe? Yeah, I mean, so uh, like the Return to Dark Tower was our boss battle, like uh, yeah. you know <laughs> everything like at the highest possible level. So that app was bananas, and uh, I want to do a shout out to Porcelain Fortress and Bjorn uh, over there. They they did the app development for us, and they're amazing. Nice. So we'll be excited to work with them on future products, but it depends on the product. So for example, we're working on Omega Virus right now. Right. Which that was the big one I was thinking of, yeah. But we're actually looking to not do an app for that one uh, for a couple of reasons. So it's an early development, and we'll see. But I, I don't think we're going to end up in an app there because it's uh, the original game was real time and you're pushing buttons and you don't want to be like mashing somebody's phone in real time and all right. that. So, and also I think it's 
the game focus of it is not so much that as it is the stuff happening on the board, so we don't really need to do an app for it. But if the game calls for it, sure, it's something we'll do. And we also have our main companion app. We might be looking to do a refresh for that soon, uh, just to, to give it a little refresh. And then we have stuff in there, so for all our games, we try and add stuff to that. And then, of course, digitally, the big announcement is that uh, we have an unmatched digital edition coming out later this year. Oh, we didn't know. So yeah, there'll be an app uh, that you can play uh, cross-platform, you can play AI, you can play with other people, cross-platform, um, things like that. Uh, it'll have a bunch of heroes to start and we'll be adding more heroes. Uh, and hopefully if it's successful, we'll, we'll keep adding to that roster as well. And uh, leveraging that digital environment so that there's things we can do on a digital app that we can't do in the game. So for example, uh, if it's successful and carries on, we'll be looking to maybe do a, a digital only hero that takes advantage of some of that stuff. Like the same way that Hearthstone does things that Magic the Gathering can't really do in a card game. Right. So that's kind of exciting, we're excited about that. Right on. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll, the pandemic obviously changed <laughs> everything. Uh, obviously, you're dealing with a lot of uh, shipping and manufacturing issues uh, as a result of that. What, as, as, a, as a game designer and an owner of a company, like, what has, has that, has, did the pandemic change anything about the way you, you're looking at approaching some of these games that, you, that you're working on now? Like, I know a lot of companies started coming out with a lot of two-player and one-player games as a result, and that's kind of, you know, we're starting to see the fruits of that right now. Is there anything that, that you guys were thinking of that, that kind of sprung forth from this crazy time we're in? Um, yeah, we're looking more, so uh, first of all, we got very lucky. Uh, we finished our Return to Dark Tower Kickstarter basically right before it, the right. pandemic really hit. So that obviously gave us a lot of uh, cash flow to carry us through the pandemic. Sales have been strong. Our biggest issue has been those international logistics. So we have titles that are out of print that we've been trying to get reprints in, and those will be hitting soon. So I, I feel like it's at least leveling out and maybe not getting worse every day like it was for a while. Uh, so hopefully that's the case. And then like I mentioned, one of the things we're looking to do is do some manufacturing domestically to cut out some of that logistics chain. Obviously, the domestic manufacturers are not quite up to par with uh, uh, the Chinese manufacturers in particular, so there's things that you just can't do in the United States. So we're, we are looking at some titles, say, like, what is a title that we can print domestically? And we're looking for some of those titles to do in the next year or two, so that we've always got uh, sort of uh, uh, a separate track that we can go on with some releases to make sure that we're getting product out on a regular basis. Uh, that we can count on without worrying about some of these other hiccups that might be happening in the international chain. Right on. Um, all right, I only have two more questions. Okay. One, uh, what are you keeping Rob busy with these days? So Rob's uh, always one step ahead, right? He's the first uh, first line of defense for us. Right now we are starting our early development on Omega Virus. Nice. Uh, and then of course we always are working on, uh, on Matt. So we've got decks for the next few years. Uh, we're working on sets that'll be coming out a year or two from now. Uh, and it's a lot of fun, but uh, you know that's something that he's working on. And then right now we're finishing up, putting all the fine finishing touches on Thunder Road for the Kickstarter. Nice. And then we're still actually putting some finishing touches on Return to Dark Tower in terms of the app. So in addition to the gameplay stuff, Rob has been in charge of doing the sound and light show, like uh, sort of the creative uh, design on what sounds and lights to play when. And uh, we're still putting those finishing touches in so that when you load up your tower and get to play for the first time, it's going to put on a nice show for you. Nice. And that's mostly Rob with the help of our sound designer and our engineers and all that. But, but Rob's been, been working on that pretty good. Awesome. All right, last question. Yes. What is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur is... Uh, what's my favorite dinosaur? <laughs> it is... Yorick. Yorick's my favorite dinosaur. It's the T-Rex in a bow tie. <laughs> nice, so, nice. 